Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Remember this game from 2015? This was a contest between the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. The Packers try some miracle play that gets stopped as a desperation attempt, but the Lions get called for a face mask. Instead of a surefire Lions victory, the Packers get new life. And then, Aaron Rodgers makes magic happen as only he can. He throws up a perfect Hail Mary to Richard Rodgers, who catches it in the end zone for the touchdown. Game over. Packers win. It's an absolute stunner. But the play probably should have never happened. Yes, I can't blame the ref for calling a face mask because of the way the head got tilted backwards, but there was no face mask. This was seemingly a clean tackle. Devin Taylor did not grab the face mask. This was a phantom face mask penalty. Just an absolutely heartbreaking way to lose if you're in Detroit. This play is still remembered in NFL history, and will be for a very long time. What if I told you there was another one of these, though? What if I told you that there was another game where one team seemingly had it won, but a phantom face mask penalty changed everything, and the other team won it on the final play of the game after getting new life? Well, that's exactly what happened in a 1984 meeting between the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. The game was won in the final moments because of a phantom face mask. And this is the story behind that. Before we show the play and the ending in question, we need some context leading up to the moment. It's September 9th, 1984, and the Minnesota Vikings are traveling to Veterans Stadium to take on the Philadelphia Eagles in this Week 2 matchup. Even though we're only in Week 2, this is a pretty big game for both teams. For Philadelphia, they're coming off of a 28-27 loss to the New York Giants in Week 1. And for Minnesota, they're coming off of a 42-13 loss to the San Diego Chargers, where they just got completely destroyed. The last thing you want to do is start a season 0-2, and this was especially true back in 1984, when only five teams in each conference made the postseason. Consider this, the year before 1983, of the 10 teams to make the postseason, none of them started 0-2. So safe to say that the stakes are high for this early season matchup. And early on, this was a game dominated by field goals. In fact, through three quarters, all that had been scored were field goals. It was a far cry from the high-scoring 55-point affairs that both teams played in last week. Jan Stenerud got the scoring going for the Vikings with a 38-yard field goal in the first quarter, which was followed up by a Paul McFadden 27-yard field goal later in the quarter to tie the game at three apiece. McFadden then hit two more field goals in the second quarter, drilling it from 37 and 49 yards out to give the Eagles a 9-3 lead at the half. And in the third quarter, McFadden added another one to his name hitting a 37-yard field goal to give the Eagles a two-possession lead going into the fourth. This was a really good game for McFadden, the rookie kicker who the Eagles spent a 12th round pick on in the draft, and it was a sign of things to come for McFadden going forward, as during this rookie campaign of his, he wound up leading the league in field goals made. Not too bad for a first-year guy, but the scoring finally picked up in the fourth quarter. This field goal battle was not meant to last forever. The Vikings had the ball in the Philly red zone to start off the fourth quarter, and on third and 16, the Vikings called an absolutely incredible trick play. Tommy Kramer, the quarterback, scored a receiving touchdown thrown to him from running back Alfred Anderson. It was the first time they ever called that play with Kramer and Anderson, and it was a beauty. Nice work by first-year coach Les Steckel to empty his bag of tricks. This made it a 12-10 game. And on the very next drive, after forcing a three and out, Anderson punched it in the more conventional way, scoring a one-yard touchdown on the goal line to give the Vikings a 17-12 lead silencing the veteran's stadium crowd. For the first time since early in the first quarter, the Vikings have the lead. Eventually, the teams go back and forth, and the Eagles have the ball late in the fourth. With two minutes left, they're able to get it into the red zone. That's where things are about to get interesting. First down on the six yard line. Eagles down by five. Ron Jaworski pitches it to Andre Hardy for a gain of four. Good start. Second down, and Hardy goes up the middle this time. Nothing doing. Third down, and Hardy tries to get the first, but once again, he's stuck. At this point, the Eagles have 14 seconds left with a timeout, and they're facing a fourth down situation. This is the game right here. And since going up the middle the previous two times didn't work, on fourth down, Jaworski pitches it to Wilbert Montgomery. I hate this call. I hate pitching it at the one, and this is partially why. If it gets blown up, that's it. Montgomery gets stuffed well short of the goal line, and that is the ball game. Vikings win. The Vikings start celebrating, they think they've got it. Except the flag gets thrown. There was a face mask on the play. 
There are two problems with this. Number one, the Vikings didn't need to commit a face mask penalty here, since Montgomery was well short. Either way, face mask or not, he was not scoring. But that's not as important as the number two problem, which is, well, there was no face mask. This was a phantom face mask. Now, I can't blame the referees here because in real time, it did look like Dennis Johnson grabbed Montgomery's face mask. It definitely looked like the fifth year linebacker committed a penalty. But watch the replay. This is a perfectly clean tackle. Just like what happened with Devin Taylor 30 years later, he grabbed the shoulder. It just looked like a face mask with the way Montgomery's head turned. Regardless, it's a first down for the Eagles with seven seconds left. And on the very next play, well, of course you know what's gonna happen. Because of course the Vikings have to lose in heartbreaking fashion. Jaworski hit John Spagnola for a one yard touchdown with two seconds left. On pretty much the final play of the game, the Eagles capitalized on the referee error and won. Philly takes it 19 to 17. As crazy as this game was, when you realize what was said afterwards in the post-game press conferences, it gets even crazier. When asked about the play after the game, nobody on the Eagles actually thought it was a penalty. John Greer, the field judge, threw the flag for face masks, but nobody on the Eagles knew what the flag was for. Wilbur Montgomery, the man who was tackled, said he had no idea who was charged with the penalty. He said he didn't even know if he was grabbed by the mask, and that even though he was wrapped around in the head area, he didn't feel anyone grab the face mask. Montgomery even said that he thought the flag was thrown for holding. He never thought a face mask penalty was on the cards. Ron Jaworski thought his team lost the game, and said that he was walking off the field dejected, not even realizing that a flag had been thrown. And even referee Jim Tunney said that Greer made the call, but had no idea who was the one that actually committed the face mask because of how many defenders were around the ball. As a side note, this is not the first time I made a video about the Eagles winning a game on a controversial call late. I made one about the time they won against the Steelers in 1979, if you want to check that out on the upper right corner. And I made one about the time they beat the Cowboys in 1980, if you want to check that one out in the upper right corner as well. It was an absolutely crazy phantom face mask penalty that ended a game and crushed a bunch of fans that nobody talks about or remembers today. And part of the reason why that might be the case is that in the grand scheme of things, this didn't matter in the slightest bit. The game had zero playoff implications. The Eagles finished the season dead last in the NFC East with a 6-9-1 record, while the Vikings finished the season dead last in the NFC Central with a 3-13 record. Even if the Vikings won and the Eagles lost, nothing would have changed. Heartbreaking at the time, but pretty meaningless three months down the road once the dust was settled from the 1984 season. Still, at least the Lions can take solace in the fact that they're not the only team that has been screwed over on one of these calls. For keen and astute Vikings fans watching that Lions-Packers game in 2015, who were around in the 1980s, they were probably thinking it was another case of deja vu. Because if there's anything we've learned on this channel, it's that history always finds a way to repeat itself. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jarrogator 9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.